Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and a very special guest. Originally from Southern California, today he rides in Puerto Rico. He is the president and CEO of SunWest Mortgage. He is the founder and creator of Angel AI. He is my new friend, Pavan Agarwal. Pavan, welcome to the Loan Officer Podcast. Hey, Dustin, this is amazing. I love the energy. It's, this is phenomenal. Yeah, we have to bring it. You know, yeah. like we're two old mortgage dudes. Mortgage can be boring. Our goal is to create episodes that are like edutaining, right? It's <laughs> going to educate you. It's going to entertain you. And we try to take the mundane and put a little bit of spunk behind it. So that's what we're going to do today, right? Yeah, I love it. And I'm, I guarantee you I'm a lot older than you are. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I did a little research, um, and I'll tell you, you look great for your age. Well, Absolutely fantastic. But I saw when you graduated college, you're like, damn, damn, well, I need to move to Puerto Rico. It's that tropical air and fresh seawater. That's, you know. Is that what it is? That's what it is. And the Fountain of Youth was there. That's what Ponce de Leon landed first. Yeah. You know what's funny? My friends up in St. Augustine, Florida, because we're in Orlando, Florida today, they say that's where the Fountain of Youth actually resides, is in St. Augustine, because Ponce... After he landed in, in in the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, he then made his way north and then landed again in St. Augustine. But you obviously found the Fountain of Youth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it. Um, and yeah, you're no slouch. Like SunWest Mortgage, y'all been cranking along for what, 40 plus years now? 43. 43 years. And you do it all. You do retail, consumer direct. You've done wholesale. And, um, and you're in all 50 states, right? Yeah, all 50 states, all the channels, uh, and Freddie, Fanny, Jenny's in like 83, 84. So way back then. And, and I'm gonna always say this, I love talking about this, is don't complain about the interest rates today. Because when we started, it was 18% at 12% uh, negative amortization. So you have 6% negative amortization. You start off with a 12% starting rate. Wow. Think about yeah. that, boys and girls. They don't even let us do NEGAM loans anymore after 2008. Actually, it's technically, I think, 2010 by the time Frank Dodd, uh, Dodd-Frank Act went through, but it was after the collapse. Yeah, 18% rates, and we we're complaining about 8% rates. And actually, after the bond rally today, uh, looks like, hey, maybe Christmas came early. Yeah, we, let's hope. There's, well, been a, there's been a number of false... Yes. False starts on this rally. So. Yeah, well, we all talked about May 10th. We just didn't know it was May 10th of 2024. <laughs> Uh, or 25, who knows? Only time will tell. Yeah. Only time will tell. So you you flew in. Well, you drove up from Miami. Yes, I was in Fort Lauderdale. Um, this morning. This morning on a TV show. Nice. What TV show? Gosh, I don't even. <laughs> one, 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 one of the local TV one shows. The, one of the local stations, yes. Okay. Yes. Very cool. You're making your way to Dallas next. Um, Dallas next for the uh, North American Blockchain Summit, which is going to be really exciting. So, so <laughs> Says <if> you. you. <laughs> Says me. Is it free booze? Uh Probably, you know. Okay, I'll come. <laughs> like you had me at free booze. <laughs> well, we got, it's, it's got an amazing lineup. We got Vivek Ramaswamy, got RFK Jr., Ted Cruz, and, and a bunch of other people up there. Because uh, you had some big names talking. Yeah, yeah. You know, those dudes don't know crap about blockchain, though. Uh, you know, but but they're politicians, so they're good at sounding as if they do. Oh, yeah. perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, no. Blockchain excites me in the manner of, like, I understand what it will do, what it can do and the importance of the chain and the the quick, safe, secure transferring of data and information. But other than that, like I'm the type of guy that I'm the polar opposite of you. I get frustrated turning a computer on, right? You know how to probably code and you sit down as a software engineer with a mortgage background and I get lost just turning on the computer. Uh, the way that I fix computers, I throw them. That's what I do. So you're going to the blockchain uh, convention in Dallas. I'm glad you're excited. Um, I'm excited about what we're going to get into today. Like, why were you on that TV show this morning? What did they want you to talk about? They had lots of basic educational question uh, as to what is AI? What is the impact of AI to the consumer? And the number one question is, is it the Terminator? Is it going to destroy all of us? Uh, and there's so much fear mongering going on about AI. And that was an, that's the whole point. It was an educational okay. session. And that's what you and I are going to talk about today. And yeah. we're also going to get into Angel AI. Because Angel AI is your product that you have created for the benefit, ultimately, of the consumer, but really of the mortgage loan originator, of the mortgage branch of the mortgage company. 
And you're offering this product for, is it free 99? Totally free. Not even 99. Free, free zero, zero. Free. free zero, zero. I stole that from my buddy Amir. My buddy Amir likes to travel the country speaking and uh, he likes to give things away. He's like, and it's just free 99, but I love yours better. But mine, you're like, no, mine's free dot zero, zero. Yeah. So loan officers, we're going to talk about AI. We're going to talk about AI in the mortgage industry, consumers, realtors, home sellers, like listen up college students. I was just at University of Central Florida talking to their college of business, learning, I was speaking to one of the deans, learning about a FinTech minor that they now offer or a master's in FinTech that they're thinking about rolling out. And we're gonna pick your brain as the SHMI, as the subject matter expert of AI, very high level, but more specifically, AI in the home buying process or AI in mortgage. I want you to answer some of those questions like, hey, is this the death of the human race? Artificial intelligence is like, are, are my grandkids going to be marrying robots? Um, what does that look like? And then more specifically, how can we start leveraging and adopting AI? Because here's one thing I have learned in my life, Pavon. I didn't adopt the internet and email quick enough, right? Looking back, I wish I knew what Amazon was before everyone else knew what Amazon was. I wish I knew what YouTube was when my best friend at the time, rest in peace, Sean Jeffries, but Sean had a YouTube channel and the year was like 2004. And I thought he was just batshit crazy. I'm like, what are you doing posting videos of you and your daughter playing the guitar and piano? Like looking back, I'm like, oh, I wish I was going to be adopt or adapting and leveraging some of these social medias. So what I've learned, I'm not gonna do that with AI. I refuse to do that with AI. I'm already been, I'm already tinkering with chat GPT. And we're having you on today so 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 we can chat about this. So let me ask you, Shmi, where do you want to start? Well, I want to start with that's exactly the reason I'm here. That's the reason I'm flying around all over the country and talking to everybody is because, and especially the mortgage community, and say, hey, wake up. If you don't wake up, it's kind of, it's just real, literally I'm doing a public, public service to the mortgage community and loan originators. Wake up. If you don't, you're going to get left behind. Right. And this is not going to go away. You know, I still remember in the 90s, you, t you brought up Amazon and people were like, no way Amazon is going to, who wants to hit a button and wait for the thing to arrive? I won't go to Walmart and buy it. But look at us today. Right. And look at Amazon today. It, it's it, not wait a couple of days. It's it, like wait a couple hours. It, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so those, you know, Amazon solved the delivery problem and it got better and better at it. Okay. So AI solves the delivery problem for mortgages. Um, and quite frankly, for anything that requires manual paper pushing, let's face it, mortgage, the mortgage loan origination process being in is, is you're pushing paper. Now you go from pushing physical paper. In the 80s, we had manila files. Remember those things? Yes. Right. Now it's, it's paper on, on your screen as a PDF, but it's still the same thing. Mm -hmm. right? We're still paper pushing. So it eliminates that. It puts, it's a robotic manufacturing as opposed to human manufacturing. So it's as disruptive to the financial services industry. And I'm talking about financial services as a whole, not just mortgages, banking, everything else. Like bank tellers? Um, bank tellers, I mean, well, they were already displaced by ATMs, right? Yes. Yeah, and, and online banking systems, right? But banking in the sense that all kinds of bank financial transactions, anytime a bank has to make a decision, whether it's gonna lend you, uh, approve you for a credit card or lend you money to, uh, to borrow for an auto loan or whatever, all of those things can be handled in the same way that we're handling mortgages now. Because if you can solve the mortgage problem, right? If you can, if I can, I create an AI that is a magnificent personal assistant for a loan officer and just takes care of everything that a loan officer would normally do by hand. And you know how complex and regulated the mortgage industry is. So if I can do that for mortgage loan officers, I could certainly do that for a bank branch manager. It's a lot easier for a bank branch manager to manage an incoming deposit customer than it is to actually, you know, a bank can can take your money. It's easier for them to take your money than it is for them to give you money. Okay. That's that's, that's the, uh, uh, the 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 paradox of our, yeah. of our system. I guess here are my questions on AI in general. So, uh -huh. um, you know, there's companies out there, push button, get mortgage. Uh -huh. And yeah, a traditionalist, let's call me that, would be like, okay, push button, get mortgage, but what if that's the wrong mortgage? What if that mortgage doesn't match your financial needs, wants, and goals? Like, yes, you qualify for it. And yes, you'll be able to 
close on a home purchase because of it. But what if actually taking an interest rate that was half a percent higher, getting a lender credit to pay all your closing costs would have been the, the better solution? Or what if a higher interest rate with no monthly mortgage insurance would have been the better solution? Or what if actually not putting 20% down, but putting 10% down, using the extra 10% so that when you bought the home, you could do the new bathroom, the new floors, and the new screen enclosure like you anticipated. But I was able to explain to you that that was better than you going to Home Depot and taking out a $30,000 consumer credit card at 18.99%. So I'm asking you because as a traditionalist, let's call me the traditional loan officer, the advisor, will AI be able to help me or potentially replace me in giving that type of consultative service to my client where I'm not just helping you get a loan to buy a house. I'm hoping you find the right loan so you can buy a house as well as make sure that you're able to match your financial needs, wants, and goals. That's a fantastic question. So here's the thing that the AI can never do, right? It, it cannot replace the relationship and the understanding that a loan officer gains with the customer. Okay. So remember, an AI is only as good as the data you give it. So if, I, if you don't build a relationship with a customer and understand that the customer needs $30,000 to, to fix up or buy furniture or whatever, or has this other need or this other need, right? P human beings aren't gonna tell a computer just willy nilly that this is what I, what I need, right? That you, you kind of have to build a relationship and pull it out of them and say, oh yes, that's what you need. Yes, okay. yeah, you have to be able to ask questions like, what do you mean by that? It, it, Wait, say that again? It, if it, I'm hearing you correctly, and you're saying right now, machine learning isn't at that point, at that that, that high of a level. Uh, I, I don't think it ever gets there. Okay. To, to pick up those kinds of, that is relationship building. That, that I, don't, I don't see it ever getting to that point, but, but once you get the information, and this is where I tell loan officers is like, you gotta rechange your why, right? Your why is no longer that I'm the best at calculating your paperwork or analyzing paperwork. It should be, I'm the best at building a relationship and understanding your true, true needs, right? And, and with that, then I can take your information, drop it into this magical machine Right, and it's going to save me hours and days of work, and I'm going to get you answers on the spot. Okay, so that's that's the difference. So you still need an expert consultant, right, that can sit down and understand the customer one on one, just like you and I gained before we started this podcast. We gained an understanding in a relationship. Yes, that makes this current experience so a so lot much, smoother. And, yes, and so much fun. Yes, right, and and you you can't take away the fun from the experience. So that's what a loan officer has to understand is, is they have to add that level of enlightenment and, and the level of spark in their relationship. And then you get the full information. Then you take that information and you drop it in the air, let it do the rest. Okay, so then you can focus on what we're doing here. You finish that with one client, then you go to the next client and you focus on the same thing with that client and so on and so on. As opposed to taking a loan app, me and you right now taking a loan app, and then saying, okay, I got to pause for an hour or two and analyze all this paperwork and prep everything perfectly for my, for my assistant to take it over, right? Now you just take the information, drop it in, next one. Yeah, I, I like where you're going with this. Like, I like how you're painting the future of the mortgage industry, especially the, more, the modern mortgage loan originator, where it's like, no, we know that we need the modern mortgage loan originator to be a much better advisor than they've ever been. We know they have to give better service. We know they also have to do a much better job of building relationships in their local communities so that they can generate the leads that's gonna be necessary. But you're saying, hey, we can leverage technology. I don't necessarily need you to be the best technician when it comes to gathering paperwork, scouring that bank statement, scouring that income doc, coming up with the, the DTI, the liabilities, the income, it's like, no, that'll be there. That'll be done for you. We can utilize machine to machine learning for that. Maybe those machines and machi machine learning can even give reps and warrants to your employer to deliver that loan to Fannie and Freddie without all of the risk of repurchases or buybacks. And you can use that time, Mr. and Mrs. Loan Officer, A, to go get more leads, 
B, to serve more clients. By the way, y'all, you may have to. Like, we don't know what's on the other end of this correction that our industry is going through, but I do know this, loan sizes have doubled and the commission rates have stayed the same over the past eight years. And at some point, you're not doing twice the work, but you're getting paid twice the money, but your company and every seven out of 10 companies are losing money. There may come a time that you're gonna be asked to make less percentage, same dollar amount, but less percentage, at which point, if you wanna make more money, you're gonna to have to be able to do more loans. You can do more loans if you're leveraging technology such as Angel AI. Like that's what I'm hearing you say. That's exactly what I'm saying. And you said it so magically. <laughs> I love the way you, you can said hire me it. as your spokesman. Yeah, exactly. I'm free 99. Right. <laughs> and so the, um, the, the thing is like, I like what you said about reps and warrants, because that's the other part of it that we run 50, 60,000, maybe 70,000 transactions loans through this already. So it is, it is so good at it that if it's, if angel AI says something, if it makes a decision on DTI or LOE or whatever, it's final. And, and you're relieved of reps and warrants because angel AI takes it. That's awesome. I mean, that, yeah. that's good for those CEOs and those C-suite executives or some people turn in like, what are, or tuning in like, what are reps and warrants? Don't worry about that y'all right now. Let your COO worry about that. Let investor <laughs> relations worry about that. You just keep uh, pre-approving people, running them through AUS, read your AUS and get the right documents. Um, how about this? I was uh, I was up in Philadelphia for the NBA conference this year and I'm very involved in the, the NBA in general and talking to my friends um, through at the various places that offer free drinks that I like to go to, uh, which is why I go to conferences like that. I go for the free drinks, by the way, and the entertainment, like the concerts and the free drinks, sign me up. But um, this topic kept coming up with AI. Discrimination or the inability to monitor uh, inadvertent discrimination. What What is someone like you who's actually in the field what, what's your take on that? Or what's your rebuttal? What's your response to someone that says, oh, we don't know if we can embrace AI right now because we're afraid that it may negatively impact underserved communities or it may leave people uh, out somehow. What is there any merit behind that? Um, yes and no. Okay. So ChatGPT, an earlier version, I think it was version three. If you asked it, and you said, give me a uh, profile of a excellent scientist, it would have said white male. Okay. Right. And obviously you, that's not right. Okay. Cause we all know it's an Asian male. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> uh, so that was a joke y'all, yeah. by the way, please do not cancel me. Please, please, please. I'm just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> right. So th that's the problem with that. It was the challenge was, was that the data that it was fed, it was just fed bad data. Yeah. Okay. So now the, um, so the, the, you, you fix that problem by if you train the AI correctly. Okay. So if you train the AI on the guidelines and you give it the proper data that matches the guidelines. Okay then it can, it can give you the right decision consistently. Okay, so what we, what we did on fair lending is because the process is so automated, we actually improve fair lending. So for example, what you said earlier was, you still have to read the DU. Mm -hmm. But with Angel AI, you don't. You don't even run the DU. It runs the DU, it runs the LP. It figures out which way is the least conditions, and then it and then it reads the conditions and it figures out what to ask. Interesting. Okay, and then when when the documents come in, it it reads the documents, right, and it makes a decision whether the document satisfies the condition or not. All based on how you programmed it. Uh, yes, on how it's been trained. Yeah. Right. Kind of, so so right. what I heard you say, I learned this as a rookie loan originator in two thousand four. Garbage in, garbage out. Version three of ChatGPT, if it had garbage in, then its result or its it, its answers wouldn't be the most accurate because it didn't have the right data or didn't have enough data. But you're saying with AI, if we supply it with the right data and a lot of it, 
it'll do its job and it'll do its job better because it won't have bias. Correct. Because at that point, it truly is playing within the guidelines, which that makes perfect sense. And that was actually a counter argument. My business partner, the mortgage company, countered that because I came back from the conference. I was sharing him, sharing with him the the nuggets and the tips and, and what I learned and the conversations that we all were having. And I shared that about AI. And he just kind of said, look, I don't know a whole lot about AI, but that seems like it def it's, it's anti what AI would stand for. You just did a more eloquent uh, 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 job of explaining why his original thought was accurate, which is no, if AI is used appropriately, you would think that this would benefit um, eliminating bias. Th this would help more people obtain home ownership, not less, because it would be taking away anything that could be perceived, whether it's redlining or whether it's a, you know, advert or, or blatant um, discrimination, takes it away. Question for you, because you mentioned it's going to run DU. So now my, my, my nerd, my LO nerd brain is, is just ding, 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 going off. But like, what happens in the, does it, is it smart enough that it's like, oh, wait a minute. Hmm. If I run DU on this self-employed borrower and I have to average two years of income, they're not going to qualify. But Freddie has a rule that because they've owned their business from greater than five years, I can run LPA at which point I can use most recent one year tax return and that's higher income. Therefore they would qualify is AI or the AI that you're developing. Is it that smart yet or how soon until it is that smart? And the short answer is yes. It's and, already that smart. Yes. And, and, and you have to think about computers differently. It's not that they're smart, right? It's just that they have the computing power to try every possible path. Right. So there's going to try all the different paths until it finds the, 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 the shortest, least cost route. They do it in like 30 seconds. It, it, I do it in 30 minutes right. or you, three hours. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, so you, you have to understand the rules and you intuitively and you figure it out. Okay. Right? A computer is just brute force it. They just run all the paths and then say, okay, here's here's the best solution. And and that's that's how they do it, right? So, you know, it would, it would, it would, most of the time, and I have to think a little bit more exactly how I would execute the example you gave, but usually it would, you would give it the situation, it run both DU and LP, and it'll look at the, it'll look at the conditions, it'll analyze it, and it'll say, okay, this is the least cost path, and, and then go down that, that route. And then it would also run the pricing, because sometimes there's, there's different pricing on Freddy execution versus Fanny execution. It'll look at the pricing and it would, and it has to calculate that into it and say, okay, I'm going to get this path, Fannie might be better pricing, but I got to get more documents and mm -hmm. Freddie might be worse pricing. I got to get, get less documents. And, and I'm not poking at Freddie or Fannie either way. Right? Correct. Yeah, no, right, I mean, right, at right. the end of the day, yeah, like these, you, yeah, you these could, are mortgage backed securities right, that right, we have to yeah. deliver into. And yeah. you have different appetites on different days. Yeah. Some days I want Italian food. Some days uh, I want Mexican, yeah. right? And yeah. some days Fannie really wants loans. Some days Freddie really, really wants loans. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not saying Fannie yeah. is better pricing or Freddie's better pricing or anything like that. Just an example. So the point is that it will try all the different paths and it'll come back to you and say, here's, here's what I figured out. And then you can always, and, and, and that's the beauty of, of this, this kind of technology, is you can always tell it. You can say, did you think about this? Have you tried this one out? And it could say, yes, I did. Or it could say, let me go try that. Yeah, so if you, so again, an AI is as good as the information you give it. So the more information you give it, right? And maybe it made some assumptions based on the information you give it. So it didn't go down a path for whatever reason, right? And so you could always say, hey, can you also try this? And I'll go do it. So who's giving it the information? That's like, like does your company, your programmers initially just upload all of the data? And then at which point now it's up to the user to then input more data. And then the machine behind the scenes is using the data that you, you have already loaded it with, with the data that I'm giving. And then from there, they are making their decisions. They're computing everything. Is that basically how it works or is it um well so basically how it works is it has decades of transactional data in it and different paths that have gone paths have gone well paths have gone not gone well so it knows all this information right so now what you as a loan officer when you're using it what you give it is you have to give data about your specific situation and the more you tell it about this is what's happening with my customer the better it will it will 
respond? Do Based on 70, 80, 100,000 prior cases. It's okay. going oh, well, to look for the, the similarities. No, actually, the, the actual database that it was in training on is hundreds of thousands okay. of loans over, over long periods of time. But the, the loans that have gone through end-to-end -end on it is about 70,000, okay. give or take. What, so like I know this from training thousands of loan originators throughout the years, and I talk to them about running their AUS, and I always get miffed, baffled, maybe even blow a gasket or two when a realtor asks a lender to send them their AUS findings. I'm like, one, I don't think we can do that. Uh, but B, it's like realtors, do y'all not understand that those AUS findings are only as good as the human that input the data? Like I could give, I can give you an AUS all day long that says accept or approve, but if I can't validate the income to be what I said it was, or the assets to be what I said it was, that AUS is worthless. So understanding that, and that's my experience with utilizing technology, where it's very much all about the, the data integrity, I call it. it. Does AI have that similar Achilles heel where as a loan originator or as a consumer, maybe this is a consumer facing portal. If the consumer tells it, I've been at this employer for three years, but really it's a year and 10 months. And I am salaried when really they're 1099. Does AI have that ability to call, not BS, but call BS on the person inputting the data? Like how, how much does data integrity play into this new world we're gonna be entering? Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. It's a complex question. Uh, so I should say it's a, it's a multiple questions in one. So first of all, it comes down to why is the realtor asking the LO for the DU findings? Well, That's, let's just stop yeah, there yeah, because yeah. realtors, you can't do that. Like <laughs> lenders, you can't do that. What? Like I'm gonna, I'm a pretty strong statement. Fact check me, tell me where I'm wrong, but I'm pretty confident you can't do that. Realtors, it doesn't matter. Loan officers, you can't do it. Yeah. But just in general, when an LO were to, were to run something through AUS, whether it's DU or LPA, Again, it's that finding is only as good as the data that was used to go into it. So if my LO misread a uh, pay stub, right? If my LO clicked the wrong box, they said it was $30,000 in savings. It was actually a $30,000 gift. That could sway my DU findings. Yeah. So will AI have the similar, not concern, where we still have to rely on the originator or the consumer to have data integrity when they're when when AI is doing its job. And, and the short answer is no. And that goes again. It kind of goes full circle. Is that the AI goes to the source documents? You could say, um, I got a gift or I got a, uh, a deposit or whatever, and AI is going to say, Great, just give me these documents. It doesn't do anything until it gets the documents. So it, it wants, if you say, I have a gift, you can say, I, I, you want me to analyze it as a gift? I'll analyze it as a gift and give you the answer. But it's not, the answer isn't, isn't final until you give me the documents that support okay. the gift. Or if you say, uh, I'm going to give you $30,000 um, from savings, it's going to say, wonderful, give me the bank statement okay. or whatever else is savings. So, so, the, 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 so the AI can't make the mistake because it reads the document. Okay, okay now, so, is, and I'm, I'm assuming AI is tied into the work number and you're utilizing probably partnerships yep. with, with technology similar to whatever Finicity offers or any of those, mm -hmm. you know, I can go out and, and grab your asset statements. I can go out and grab your income, your W-2s. I can go to the IRS and grab your tax transcripts. I'm assuming AI is doing that, that same thing behind yes, the scenes. Yes, yes. For, for, when, for when and where it's available. Yeah. Obviously not always available and heck, not always accurate depending on who the employer is, right? We need the employer to report properly to the work number so that the work number can then report back to us appropriately so our technologies will work. Um, okay, but I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. It, you're saying that if, like, like well, I guess what would happen if, if I said I have $100,000 in the bank, but you can't source it in my bank, AI is going to come back and say, well, you're qualified as long as you can provide me with these documents. R and the document may be a bank statement that has $100,000 in it. But then you get the bank statement that has $100,000 in it. And there's a $50,000 large deposit that you now can't source. 
AI is going to say, I need you to source this $50,000 deposit. And then you go source it. And they're like, oh, it's a credit card advance. Well, sorry, we're dead. Exactly. Would AI ever be able to say, I need you to source this deposit. And please understand, if if the deposit was, and it starts listing, cash, uh, borrowed funds, credit card advance, what have you, it's it's a non-eligible source of funds? Like, is, is AI there? Um, I, I It does do that. Okay. And we've tuned it up and down on the amount of information it gives up front. Because sometimes you say too much, people get, yeah, they gloss over and there's like so much to read. So it, there's a fine balance. So, in, you know, our engineers really are business people who, who we deal with consumers and loan officers every day. We, we, we're constantly adjusting that, that, that needle to what is the right amount? Because if you say, give me, a, give me your, give me your uh, source of funds, Right. Give me your bank statement. And then we list, but make sure it doesn't have all these mm -hmm. things. Now someone's reading three paragraphs. They're going to think, oh, this is too hard. And they're going to throw their hands up and go away. So in right. a way, because this is going to follow, um, right. let me go into my next question. If I'm a mortgage processor, mortgage underwriter, mortgage closer, how concerned am I about the viability of my career moving forward? Uh, you should be looking to change into sales. <laughs> right. And that's what, and, and frankly, that's what we've done. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, we at SunWest, right? And and people are going to be surprised when they hear this. That we don't have any of those positions. Right? And the underwriters, we have wonderful, brilliant underwriters who've been with us forever. And they got retrained to be data scientists. Okay. So they're purely data engineers. And we train them how to do that and how to feed the AI so that AI gets smarter and smarter. Okay. Okay. So, so that's... You're basically the future is two paths. You're, you're going to be going into engineering, or you're going to go into relationship building. Right, that is the future of all the the workplace. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, the oh oh wow. I, I'm not Whoa. just I'm not just talking about mortgage companies. Not I'm just mortgage. Okay, I'm talking the the world with AI five years from now is sales relationship building. Or engineering. Okay. okay. Th there's mm -hmm. nothing in between. We're going to end on that. Like, like no, <laughs> meaning we're not ending the show right yeah. now. I want to put a bow on mortgage, and then I want to go into our last chapter, which is what you just stated, the five years from now, speaking on a very holistic, large scale, not just one particular industry. So I would say for the mortgage processors and closers that are tuning in, if you're not close to retirement age, if you're looking for longevity in this industry, please understand your role going forward is gonna be dealing specifically with a computer, with an algorithm and, and managing data, input, output, uh, or you're going to have to get into customer service, right? Some kind of a service, you said sales, but some kind of a concierge, client success, um, answering of questions, friendly, happy, you give great phone, like that's the type of role that it's going to be. But you're saying that's not just mortgage. You're saying we get to 2029, 20, we're getting to enter the 2030s. But it was it the roaring, oh, the 30s of the 19s were rough. We don't want to repeat that. Um, but, but when we get into the 30s, AI is going to have taken our world like everything. Like you either are in sales, service, or you're in computing, data, engineering. Correct. Does that mean I either go to school and get a communications degree, or I go to school and get a computer science degree? Or can I still have a wide array of uh, post-graduate coursework or post-high school coursework, but ultimately I'm either gonna be working with the machine or I'm gonna be working with the humans. Yeah, I, I would add, add a, I would add a third category there, which is creativity, art, right? Creative, creative art and design, creative writing. Okay, you know, there's all this talk about you know different kind of AI systems that produce all this wonderful art, but when you look at it, it's not real art. Yeah, yeah you can tell it's AI generated, and and it'll never be inspiring art. Okay, so the best example because it lacks get, emotion. Yeah, and it, it just it lacks it lacks depth. Okay. Right. And and the best example I give is is if you go to ChatGPT um, before Angel AI came out and he said, "Give me a logo, design me a logo for an AI company," I guarantee you it would not be a ballerina. Okay. Yeah, 
right? Yeah. Now there's enough data in it that it probably would come up with a ballerina or something like that. Okay. Why the ballerina? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a, a ballerina is, and if, if you look at the logo carefully, it's got like millions of lines that, that put the logo in because that's millions of data points and code that's gone into it of training and years of training that goes into it. And a ballerina takes decades to master his or her um, craft, craft yeah. right, and, and, and sport. Right. And to, it's elegant. And it's elegant. And it's powerful. And it's strong. And it's I flexible. Mean, and it's flexible. Yes. I love it. Yeah. yeah, having a daughter who did dance for, for 12 years and it started with a ballet bass, um, I have an appreciation for ballerinas. Now, don't get me wrong. I prefer to watch hip hop dancing. <laughs> like, that's more my speed. But, yeah, there is, there's a lot. It's powerful. Like, I like it. I like um the logo that you have selected for angel ai why the name angel ai okay uh so one last thing before oh, I, yes. before i answer that question and the most important thing about a ballerina or or basically figure skating which is ballet mm -hmm. is they make it look so easy until you try to do it yourself it's yes. this it looks like so simple anybody could do that right and that's the same thing um angel have AI you ever worn worn point shoes uh, or point flats or point slippers whatever they're called i'm, I'm way too uncoordinated unathletic to do anything like that yeah have so. you looked at a ballerina's feet they're yes. all jacked up yes yeah because yes. they have wooden blocks that they yeah. they get up on their toes on the yeah. wooden blocks yeah. and it is very graceful and it's very hard to do i've never tried it but i've witnessed um dozens of of, of teenage girls attempt to get on point yeah. and uh, those that do it well they make it look effortless nonetheless i digress um the, the name angel ai yeah. So actually, it went through. We went through a couple of name changes till we finally settled on on Angel AI. So it used to be called Morgan, and before that, in the early early days when we didn't have a brand for it at all, it was called Virtual Assistant. Okay. So that's how it evolved. And Morgan was uh, short for Mortgage Magic Magician. Okay. Okay. And then as as we talked about, you know, as the product expanded, and it's like it's a personal assistant for everybody not just for loan officers it works for realtors and now we've got different different versions coming out for any industry and we're like okay it doesn't work anymore morgan doesn't work and so angel ai is basically saying hey you have an ai guardian angel with you all the time 24 7 helping you take care of your finances take care of the your personal needs so so it was like an angel guardian you know guardian angel ai it was like perfect and when we looked it up a name was available. I couldn't believe it. No one's ever, yeah. No one's ever used Angel AI. And, I love it. And so we, I need to get you one of those T-shirts though, so I can rock one on a future episode. Because I like the colors too, by the way. Uh, those colors really work well. They look like um, I'm into uh, doing triathlons, <laughs> and my kit. They're called kits, by the way. But my triathlon kit is very much the colors of your logo. Yeah, which you ought to see me with my pasty pale skin, my bald head, and I'm rocking like this pink and blue and orange out on the race course for four to six hours. That's a whole nother visual and episode that I won't make you go down. Um, I do want to circle back because I want to talk about the, the, the whole five years from now. Um, but I have a couple more just basic questions because my curiosity is starting to take over. When did you start getting into AI? Like you as Pavan, like you were like, hey, this shit's the future. I got to get into this now. What year was that? That was 1985, 84. Well, get out of town. Yeah. The internet wasn't even around in 1985. Uh, actually, it was, but. <laughs> was it really? So 85, yeah. you and Al Gore were hanging out <laughs> and and you were creating the internet. No, I'm you, not going to take credit for creating the internet. Yeah, that I'm was, joking. Uh, By the way. The Department of Defense who created the internet. Okay. You, you actually, that, I mean, of course you're correct. But yes, you were correct. Uh, no, do you remember? Do you remember it was, it was uh, the 90... Was it the 96 election that, that Gore yeah, lost yeah, yeah. To, to Bush? Yeah. And there was like, someone was mocking Al Gore, who at the time for our younger generation, he was the vice president under Bill Clinton. And he had come out and made a statement where it was like, well, I've basically, I basically invented the internet. 
So ever since then, it stuck with me. I was at an impressionable age at that point in my life. So I always joke, oh, yeah, Al Gore, you know, the guy who invented the Internet, yeah. when we all know is the Department of Defense. I want to say going back into the 50s? Uh, the 60s, yeah. Into the maybe, 60s. Maybe 50s. No, it was actually 60s in response to the Vietnam War. Okay, yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah. Was it was it Korea going into Vietnam or was it, it, it Vietnam? It was Vietnam. It was, okay. It was them getting communication through. Yep, the, so it was 85. Yeah. So 85 is when the internet, 85 is when the, um, the super nerds like you in a loving way <laughs> were like, yeah, there's going to be a, a time that robots take over. Yeah. Yeah, these robots are going to be able to process information really quick. So you, it's been that long. It, it, so when ChatGPT came came about, you're like, oh, psh, this is old news. Uh, in a way, I mean, there's, there's a lot of novel stuff in ChatGPT, which is pretty exciting. Okay. Um, and I can geek out and go into that. Uh, but I think we'll lose our audience. If we I would. We we 100 would. You say that for for Dallas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you say that for for Dallas when uh, you and uh, Robert Kennedy are hanging out and yeah. having uh, a couple of bourbons. Uh, you, you can talk about uh, the the novelty aspect of ChatGPT. Yeah. So then let's do this to put a bow on today's episode. Kind of walk me through. Spend the next two or three minutes walking me through what does my life look like in 2029. Well, I. I the best example is when you talked about you wanted one of these t-shirts. Yes. It's so simple. So all you have to do is ask Angel. So you go to askangel.ai and you, you just start chatting with her. You say, I want a t-shirt. And she will deliver you one of these t-shirts to you, your size and your, your address. Obviously, you give her, give her your address. So it is that simple. So that's actually when you... So, so I'll be able to go to the grocery store and shop this way? Yes. You will see. will there be robots in the aisles that will go and find? Because I like mini tater tots. I do not like the big tater tots. So I want the mini tater tots. I want them to shop for Bogo. If it's buy one get one, I, I want to buy it. Just did that yeah. with some apple juice because it was Bogo. It'll do that. It, it'll do that. Yeah. And don't and, buy the beer unless it's already cold. Because do not bring me home a twelve pack that's already warm. It, ex exactly. And that's that's what we're demonstrating. Wow. When you go to askangel.ai and you ask her for a t-shirt, you're you're seeing the future of AI commerce. It's no longer e-commerce, it's AI commerce. Okay. And and you just talk to her and you said, This is this is the t-shirt I want. She'll ask you some questions and she'll deliver you a t-shirt. Okay. Now that could be applied to any kind of commerce. So it's a, it's a AI commerce demonstrator. And and again, like everything else with Angel AI is free. And I do want everyone to try and experience that. So it, it's right now, they can go to Angel AI. Yeah, yeah. And it, what's is it Angel AI or uh, Angel? You, you go to Ask Angel AI. Ask Angel AI. Right. And, you, and right now, it's specifically to support the mortgage community, but that's not the the long term goal. Yeah, the long term goal is everybody's personal assistant. And there's there's a bunch of features that are coming out in the next 60, 90 days that the corner coffee shop or the corner hair salon can use it to to nurture and keep their customers. And it's free. And, and it's free. How can it be free? Nothing's well, ever free. And, well, the, the, the point is, the point is I want user, I want to, I want to build the user database of, of Angel AI. I want millions of users on Angel AI. Okay, because, and, it, and it's really simple, tech companies are valued on user, on how big the user adoption is. So that's what, that's what I want. I want every single American with okay. an Angel AI account. Okay, because ultimately they're going to be putting their queries in there. That query is going to give you some insight into consumer behavior, and then someone's going to be willing to pay you for consumer behavior. Um, I'm, I'm more more directly is is I've got partnership with banks. I got obviously my own mortgage company, and I've got all these services that I'm going to be offering through 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 my affiliates. Yeah, because you can see some based on someone's queries. You can see where they are in life, and then you can even suggest certain pro products or services that they'd be interested in. Exactly. I read this uh, book, and it talked about, um, and this isn't going to blow your mind, but it blew my mind. Basically, Target knows women are pregnant before women know that they are pregnant, based on their shopping behavior. All because they gave them one of those little keychains that they hang around with the with with the QR code on it that lets them scan it to win awards and 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 coupons. And all of a sudden, based on their spending habits, Target can start sending them advertisements for products you would only need if you were pregnant. And these women are like, why are they sending this to me? Like, because Target knows you're pregnant, <laughs> right? And they know you're pregnant just based on studying your and millions of other people's um, 
spending behavior. So with AI, obviously the service is the personal assistant. The service is making things streamlined, stress-free. And in return, it's like, yeah, and by the way, and by the way, we've been doing this for 20, 30 years and not telling you. So let's just tell you, by the way, yes, we're going to get a, a gauge on what is common, what is popular, and it's going to help us to recommend other services to you that, by the way, will still benefit you. So we're still doing you a favor, but that gives us the insights to know which of our partners we want to promote. And those partners will end up paying us a fee to promote them. In a nutshell. In, in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's capitalism, capitalism at its best, right? That is, I love it. As a business owner and operator, I'm like, yes, 100%. But like flying an airplane, would AI fly my airplane? Or is a pilot still fly my airplane? I mean, this autopilots have been around forever, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, and then what Cooking he, my food. Well, the example he just gave with Target, figuring yeah. out th that you're pregnant, that is AI. Yeah, you know? okay. I mean, that's just pattern recognition. Okay. So then- Last question, because is it the, is this the demise of of the Western civilization? Like, what does employment look like in five years? Like, what 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 number of of adults living in America will be gainfully employed versus those that are like, I really don't. There's no jobs for me. Well, you know, the I, the best example I give is washing machines. Okay, so before washing machines came out in the '50s, where every every household had a washing machine, you did. You did your laundry and your and your dishes by hand, and this. so hours every day or hours many hours every week were just gone in household chores, All right? And then you went and you spent the money on a washing machine and you saved up all the time. And did that take away some jobs? Yes, right. So launder launderers laundering services and so forth got reduced, but freedom increased. Household freedom increased. That means more time was available to to work, to start business, to spend with your kids, education, so forth. Okay, so it is a challenge if if you have tools like AI only for the few. Okay, then there's a problem. If you if you keep it constrained to the big corporations, and you don't democratize it down to everyone else, then Yes, there is a big problem, and there will be a loss of jobs and nothing to replace it. Okay, and and a few elites will benefit from it. However, if you get AI in the hands of everybody and everybody is saving time, that means everybody can take the time and reinvest in new skills and new new ideas and new businesses and and new whatever. Okay, then civilization increases. So. Perfect answer, by the way. And I have two final thoughts on that. Like you mentioned the analogy of people washing their clothes in their sink or in the tub by hand or using a laundry service. But then the advent of washing machines, what well, kind of took that away. However, it then brought people who have to make washing machines. It then brought people who have to fix washing machines when they break. So, it, it, yes, I'm sure it wasn't a, a net neutral Right. I'm sure it wasn't a, oh, you know, we, we lost a hundred thousand jobs. We picked up a hundred thousand, but it did create new industry with the, the, and then and that's not on top of the time savings and what can you do with this extra time of, I can go get an education. I can become creative. And then does that creativity end up be becoming creating a product or service that our communities or our country needs? Um, but then my, my real final thought is like, y'all, this is coming. This has been coming. Since the 1960s, 1985 for Pavan, like this is coming. So us putting our heads in the sand, like that's just asinine. Like let's go ahead and open our eyes. Let's start embracing it and let's welcome it so that we're not left behind. So it's it's not, you're not the late adopter to this thing called Facebook, the late adopter to this thing called Amazon, the late adopter to this thing called YouTube, the late adopter to this thing called the internet or email or Heck, I remember how resistant I was to get a damn smartphone. Well, I don't want email on my phone, right? I mean, that that was me. I learned from that lesson. I'm like, nah, at this point, it's going to come. It's going to be here. I might as well embrace it so that I can find ways that it can benefit me, it can benefit my loved ones, it can benefit my clients, benefit my business. And you're offering that solution for free. 
right? Yep. Askangel.ai. Ask Angel. That's, that's where you go to use it, and you can go to angelai.com to learn about it. There's lots of materials up there. And if people want to follow you, like, are, are you a uh, you a TikToker? Uh, are you I'm on Instagram? Mostly, mostly on LinkedIn. Mostly on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, just search my name on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's right P A V A N. Yeah. A G A R W A L. Pavan Agarwal. Correct. Excellent. You did that right off memory. Look at uh, you. Right off of memory. Yes, I haven't had that much head trauma yet in life. I quit playing football at age eighteen. Had I gone another four years, <laughs> who knows if I could have done that? No, Pavan. Thank you so much for taking the time to drive Lauderdale to Orlando before you fly to Dallas to educate us to promote this awesome product that, that you're offering mortgage loan originators, go check it out. Literally it's free. It's not going to hurt you. And you too can be an early adopter. Any final words for the audience before we wrap up? Um, yeah, you know, I get some criticism on, you know, the message that I gave earlier in this, in this podcast about, Hey, we don't have any closers and underwriters and so forth. And that the world is basically headed towards data engineers, creative people and relationship people. And, and I, my response to that is, I'm helping you out. I'm telling you today what's actually happening. I, 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 could, I could keep it a secret and not talk about this stuff. And, and then you're gonna be like a deer in the headlight when it does hit you. Yeah, like That's, don't kill the messenger. Yeah, it, it, basically. Yeah. Uh, and look, the sooner you know, there's still time to, to adjust and prepare and get trained and, and, and move on. And, and we've been doing that with our staff and we've been training and, and investing in that. Right. It's a time where you need to stand up and say, I need to learn this and ask your companies to invest in you and, and start making the changes. And, and right now, I mean, anywhere, everybody can see how much trouble the mortgage industry is in, how much contraction there has been. Hey, it's a time to hit reset and say, look, this technology is coming anyways. The industry is going through a reset. Let's, let's do this right. I love it. You are so on point. Um, I hope that our relationship doesn't end here. I hope this is the beginning of a beautiful thing. I look forward to myself dabbling in angel AI, right? I, I look forward to continuing to promote your service, your free service to not just the mortgage community, but also all the clients that they serve. But right now it's all the time that you and I have for this particular episode. So I'm going to go ahead and close it out the way that I typically do. Y'all, if you like what we're doing, do us a favor, please share us, not once, not twice, but three times. You can watch us on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, make sure you subscribe. I love watching our subscribers just tick, tick, tick up. We are heading towards 20,000 subscribers on our way to 30. Spotify, Apple, give us a five-star review. Share us with a friend, share us with a colleague, and keep tuning in. He's Pavan, I'm Dustin. You have just tuned in to the Lone Officer Podcast. That is all the time we have for you today, but we do look forward to catching you on the next episode.